But the point is, you want to put some living food in your body. And if you put living things in your body, what's your body going to do? It's going to live. If you put a bunch of dead stuff in your body, stuff that is not alive, stuff that is whatever, what do you think is going to happen in your body? I mean, it doesn't need to get a lot more complicated than that. What makes something living versus non-living? I mean, that, that might be a fun thing to talk about. But basically, something that can reproduce itself is kind of living. So a rock can't reproduce itself. We can. We're living. The rock's not, right? Um, inside the cells itself, what is it that's really alive? What is it that has the activity that's different than a, a mineral or a non-living thing? It's really the enzymes in there. And enzymes are things that they act on other molecules and then they, they change them. Whenever you heat foods, um, and I've read basically beyond 118 degrees Fahrenheit, you start to, to basically think of it like killing the enzymes. So those things that are actually active and alive in a food, they die. Um, so you still get energy from it, but you don't get a lot of, of life from it. And um, so what we need to do is put more and more of the living stuff into the body. Um, yeah, if you, if you heat food, that'll kill enzymes. It also says lengthy storage. So if you take a juice and you leave that out, or a fruit or a vegetable, for a week or two weeks, there's successively, there's going to be a breakdown of the enzyme activity. There's going to be a, a decay even of some of the vitamins and things in there. So um, you want to eat stuff fresh. You want to eat it while it's alive. Another good way to think of it, of what's living versus non-living, is could that plant that you just ate reproduce itself if you put it in the ground, right? So if you took some flour that you're making your pizza dough with and put it in the ground, you're probably not going to grow any wheat out of that, right? Whereas if you took uh, a raw wheat seed and you put it in the ground, it could grow. Um, if you took some, you know, if I took the seeds out of an apple or a grapefruit or something and I put them in the ground, theoretically they could grow. Whereas if you heat those things to a certain point or you dehydrate them or you let them sit around long enough, they die. They're not going to reproduce themselves. So you want food that's actually capable of reproducing itself. All right. All right. So what what's in the juice? All those things we just talked about. The antioxidants are in there. Um, things that are going to reduce the aging effect and the damage to your cells. Um, the enzymes are in there. You know, that's the life in there. The minerals, things that come up from the soil, from the ground. The vitamins. Everybody knows about vitamins. And then all sorts of other things that we don't routinely look on the box and see it listed there. We don't really, they're not really that well studied, but they're good for you. You need them. Um, they call those phyto, phytochemicals in general, right? So plant chemicals, um, they're very beneficial to you. They're going to prevent cancer. They're going to prevent fungal overgrowth. They're going to prevent parasites in your body. They're going to prevent, prevent viral infections and things in your body. So um, the living raw food is full of all those type of things. So when you think about juicing, that's what I think about. You're putting life into the body. We already talked a little bit about that. All right, so the goal, what's your goal? What are you trying to accomplish with juicing? Um, more than any specific treatment or anything like that, 